Welcome everybody. This episode, I'm gonna be honest, it's gonna be pretty substantial. So you need to pay attention. We're gonna be talking about get static paths and there's a lot of information around this. So this isn't like a work meeting or a class at school that you just ignore. Pay attention here, turn your brain on, let's get started. What we're gonna do is we're going to build the page that allows us to get a specific customer. So the end goal is to be able to get a specific customer's information show up on the page. But we want to do this with static content. What this means is that when we check the source, we should be able to see the value John Smith inside of the source code. This is a little bit more difficult when it comes to passing in an ID like we're doing here. And that's because we could have th millions of IDs. We could have billions of IDs, trillions, quadrillions, quintrillions, sextillions. Can I say that? Am I gonna get demonetized? Essentially, we could have a lot of customers. How are we going to manage caching all of this data? This is where get static paths comes in. This is going to define exactly which IDs you want to be statically processed. So Next.js will statically pre-render all the paths specified by get static paths. So all you have to do is manually type out like thousands of IDs. Well, it actually can be a lot simpler than that. For example, you can make a query to get all of the IDs from the content in your database, but having to get all the IDs for every single customer in your potentially massive database is also kind of a bad idea as well. So there's various things we can do. One example is to just put in the individual IDs that are going to be visited a lot. You can imagine if you're running like an e-commerce store, you could put in the ID for products that are visited the most frequently. Or another option is to just have it so that when somebody requests a page for the first time ever, it is then cached. From that point on, the cached version will be used instead of making Next.js recreate the static content. So let's say you do have millions of products or millions of customers. Instead of making every single one of those pages static ahead of time, we can just have it so that it becomes a static page whenever a certain customer is visited or whenever a certain product is visited. So to get started with this, we are going to go into our customer's parameterized page and create a get static props and eventually a get static paths as well. You will need both of these. So here we are in the id.tsx file defined inside of our customers folder, which is visible at slash customers slash ID. And right now we have it so it's just saying customer ID. So when we visit that page, which I'm going to say npm run dev, it'll just say customer followed by the ID and whatever information we pass in here, it'll just display it on the page. This is no connection to the database. So even if we put some junk in here, like trash, it's still going to show up. So what we're going to do is head over to our customer page and we will create get static props. So export const get static props. And this will be assigned an arrow function. And inside here, we're going to have to return some data. Now, if you want to get the suggested properties here, you will need to use TypeScript. So for this, we are going to type this to get static props with a capital G, which is going to need imported from next. Now we can get some tips in the problem section and we can see that we are expected to return something from this list, specifically the props property. So props is also going to be an object here. Let me just format this a little bit better. So it'll look like this. And inside of props, we'll say customer. And here's where we return that specific customer. I'll get the information from the database in just a second, but for now, let me just type in ID is five, name is test customer, and industry is test industry. We're gonna keep building as we go, but I just wanted to get this working as is. The props keyword is going to allow us to get this data from props here. So you could say customer, Props dot customer dot ID. Now we need to define what type this parameter here is. We did this a certain way in earlier videos where we use this infer get static props type, type of get static props, which did the job and still gave us suggestions such as customer dot and seeing that we can enter one of those properties. However, 
there's a different way of doing it that is a little simpler. And that is that next page can take a generic of the type. So we'll say props. And if you're not using TypeScript, this is probably, you're not gonna do a lot of this, which actually sounds quite nice, but this will help us get some practice with TypeScript. So what we do now is we define a type up here, which we can call props. And this can have a property on it, customer, which is going to be of type customer. Now this doesn't refer to the customer down here. Instead, it refers to a type, which we're going to need to import. We define this inside of the other page. So we can say export type customer, or you could just put this code over in the ID page. But this will require us to only write it once. So now we can import it. Import type customer from, and it's going to be in the same path index. So that will get rid of any of our problems. And now when we type out a specific customer, we can see what properties we can use, such as the ID or the name, which I will use for this example. And let's visit the page. Let's make sure our server is running. And now when we see on the page, we get the server error. Get static paths is required for dynamic static site generation pages and is missing for customer's ID. What this means is that we are using a parameterized page, but we are not defining another function, which we will define here. Export const get static paths, which will also be defined the same way. And as for this, we're going to return an object as well. Now to get the suggested properties, we can use a specific type. So let's go ahead and type this return to get static paths, which again will be imported. So let's add that to our import list. So now we have all these imported up here. Okay, so now what we can do is we can return the specific things that are needed and you can see the different options here. Now specifically, we're going to require this paths and we will also be required to give a fallback. So let's start with paths. Here is where we define all of the different IDs that we want statically generated on build. So here is an example. Uh, paths is actually an array, not an object. My bad. And inside of this array, we're going to define multiple params objects. So an object with the params property which takes an object with that ID. So a little bit complicated on the nesting. And you also wanna make sure that this ID matches whatever you're using for the parameter here. So let's try to define one of those. We will say params, which will be assigned an object with an ID property and the value one. So that is how you can provide a single parameter to create a static file for. If we wanna do another one, then we'll just pass in another object so we can copy this and paste it here and just change the ID to a different value. Now, there's another requirement inside of this returned object. So not only will we return paths, but we will also return fallback. And I'll explain that, but for now, just put it to false. So it'll look like that. The quick version is that this will 404 if we don't have the IDs one or two. So checking out our site now, we go to customers trash and we get a 404 as expected. And if we go to ID one, we get the data customer test customer, which is exactly what we returned from this get static props. Now, regardless of what ID we pass in here, whether it's one or two, which are the only options, it's going to return the same object, which doesn't really make sense. So what we'll do now is we will actually request for the data. And this is where you would get the data from a database or an API or wherever else you get data from, a file, you know, etc. So what we'll do is we will say axios.get and axios is going to need imported. So import axios from axios and we'll say axios.get this is going to take a path it's going to be very similar to the previous path we've used so i uh, will take this feel free to type it out and we will paste that in here now the only difference is we're going to need to append the id so that way we can basically dynamically get the id from the api and this correlates exactly to our backend. So I'll show you an example. 
for example, customers one, and we get that specific customer. So we need to figure out how to grab the ID passed in to the customers page on the front end and pass that back to the back end API. So how do we do that? Well, we're not going to use this example where we used use router and router query. We're going to do it a different way so we can remove those lines. And instead, this get static props can have a parameter here, context, and this is going to have the parameter attached to this object. So we can access it and let's go ahead and replace these quotes with back ticks to do some substitution. So we'll do slash dollar sign curly braces context dot params dot ID. Context dot params is possibly undefined. Just go ahead and replace the dot with question mark dot for conditional chaining. All right, so we have that URL. Now we just have to assign this to a variable const result. And obviously this needs to be defined as an async function, my bad. It's kind of an important part that I forgot. And what we'll do is we will console log result just to take a peek at it. And when we visit this page, we should get a console log in the terminal. So we want to traverse into data and then into customer. So for props, we can instead of using this hard coded object example, we could say data, which is on results so result dot data dot customer and that should do the trick. Now this props is going to be sent down here and we should be able to go into the customer and then grab the name off of that data there. So we should get customer Sal Brown, which comes from the database. So here you can see that there. So far so good. Let's just take a peek at what we got. Make sure you understand everything so far. We have get static props, which when we are in a parameterized page, we will also need get static paths, which define which IDs are okay to statically process. So this data, even though it's coming from the database, will show up in the source. So Sal Brown, you can see it there. Now I wanna talk about some of the other options, such as this fallback, but first I wanna take a closer look at some of the TypeScript options. So specifically, we can define what kind of data we are expecting from Axios. And this will be an object which we can destructure. And we are looking for a customer property, which is of type customer. What this will do is it will allow us to see what properties are expected. If we remove this, we do not get that suggestion. So that is one fix and it'll prevent us from typing something bogus here. You see we get a problem. It does not exist on type customer. So let's go ahead and fix that. And I wanted to showcase this non-null assertion operator, which allows you to use an exclamation mark to say something is not null. And people have been using this to good luck for the parameters from context. So in our code, when we have this nested optional chaining, we can potentially improve that by saying const params and assigning it context dot params with an exclamation mark. And now we can head over to this request here and we can remove context and we can remove the question mark. Now, how do we know that dot ID is a valid value on params? Well, we know that it is, so it's it's probably fine. However, we do have the option of passing additional type information to get static props, which will include the props type and the ability to type params. So it'll look something like this. And this is actually going to be an interface. So we'll say interface params, and this will extend parsed URL query and this will need imported. So we can import from query string and then say ID, which is going to be of type string. And we can pass this type to this second generic argument params. So super obnoxious. This took me forever to figure out and I still only like sort of understand. So TypeScript's kind of one of those things where I set it up a certain way and I'm like, oh, it doesn't work. So I try something else, oh, it doesn't work. And then eventually I get it working and then I just don't touch it, never. And it's really just adding benefits to us when it comes to not typing out something wrong and having 
runtime issues instead of compile time issues. So if any of these things don't really seem like they're adding a lot of benefit, then oftentimes they are optional. So we could have just not did this step and our code would have been pretty much the same. But now we can be guaranteed to use ID and we don't accidentally type something bogus. Now let's take a moment to talk about the fallback. This is what behavior you want to happen if an ID is not listed in the potential available IDs. Right now we only allow for ID one and two, so that means if I go in here and type in ID three, we're going to get a 404, even if that data exists in the database. And the reason is because fallback is set to false. One potential fix for this is instead of hard coding each of these params, we can get all of our IDs from the database. So that will look like this. We will go up here and say const result is await axios.get, passing in this path without the ID, pasting it here, and this should be async. And now what we can do is we can say const paths is result dot data dot customers dot map where this is going to take a function and each item in here is going to be a customer which is of type customer and we will return an object that has a params property with another object that has an ID which contains the customer dot ID then instead of hard coding this, we can just assign this the paths const we just created. So now we should be able to get any of our customers, even though fallback is false. So let's check it out. We can go to customers three, and I think I might just be traversing the data wrong or something. So let me just console log customer.id make sure we're actually getting that value. So we'll do a refresh here and then take a look at the terminal. And we are getting all of those IDs. Oh, actually, I think I might know what the problem is. And that is that this is a number. So we should just be able to invoke dot to string. Let's see if that fixed the problem. And there we go. So now any of the customers we have, we should be able to get a details page for. So for example, we can pass in ID 12 and this will give us customer test two and all of it's going to be static so we can see test two inside of the source now keep in mind there are a few gotchas which is we are currently running in dev mode so what that means is it's always going to do the static compilation so what we need to do is figure out how things are going to work when we are running in production with npm run build npm run start and we need to take a deeper look at the fallback property this video is already plenty long so i decided we're going to split this up into two parts so stay tuned for the next episode which is going to be about all of those things we just mentioned thank you so much for watching please be sure to subscribe help me get to a mill stay tuned i'll see you in the next one peace out